Hello, entrepreneurs. Um, so I totally screwed that up. That is the beauty of life. I got a tip yesterday from someone on my team who said, you know what a lot of streamers do is they, they do a countdown clock beforehand. It gives you all a chance to get your popcorn and get settled for this live show. Uh, and Justin, who will be on in just a second, I totally has his, had his face on the screen for about 12 <laughs> seconds of that before we cut to the, uh, to the countdown. But hopefully you guys got ready. Welcome to the Daily List Report. Uh, this is episode two, so second day into this. Uh, every Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Pacific. Uh, this show runs for about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on our guests. Um, you know, our goal here is to bring you super topical, super actionable, very useful information uh, as we all go through this crazy time. Um, and just as a reminder, right? Like. This is such an important time for you. Your clients need you. You know that. And you're restricted more than ever in terms of the way that you can connect with them. And so we're using this as an opportunity to connect with you. And so, you know, the daily list report is, is a fun little play on words for us. It's, we send out a daily email to all of our customers called the daily list report. Hopefully you all open that every morning. Um, and the word rapport um, is really, really speaks to the purpose of this show, which is our desire to connect with you. We want to deeply understand you. And in turn, importantly, also, we want you to understand us and the perspective that we're coming from. So um, so today's, today's a really exciting day. Uh, we've got Justin Aragon today. Uh, he is our head of legal at List Reports, a legal expert. We're going to get back to him in just a second. Um, he's going to be tremendous. Tomorrow, we've got AJ Shaw, my co-founder and CEO. If you watched yesterday, you saw him. We're going to talk about the digital open house. Thursday, we've got Rod Shiva, who's our director of customer growth uh, and a real estate agent. Um, and he is going to talk about the agent perspective. Um, and then, Justin, I'm going to mute you. Um, and then on Friday, we've got Scott Brixton, our resident economist. Uh, and he's going to talk a little bit about what's happening in the market. Uh, and that's pretty exciting. So one of the new things that we're going to try today is we're trying to integrate into this um, some daily talking points. So things that are from the headlines that we think are super important right now. Uh, so there's a few headlines that we're tracking today. The first one you may have heard about is that the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, uh, they issued some guidance that identified real estate as an essential business. Um, so that's, that's great news. Um, now, there are decisions that can be made at the state level um, that would prevent you from doing certain activities like open houses and things like that. Our position is that we want you to be safe. We want you to use digital as much as possible. Um, so make sure you take care of yourself um, and your customers. Um, there are a few states that are currently holding out on this. So Utah, Louisiana, Pennsylvania, New York, Michigan, Vermont, um, they have not yet defined real estate as essential. Um, so we'll see how that unfolds, but this moves in real time. Second headline that we're tracking this morning, which was interesting, is that the FHA, uh, FHA and VA relaxed their appraisal and income verification standards. Um, so the FHA, uh, FHA and VA will allow for exterior only appraisals, in some cases, um, desktop appraisals, where the appraiser doesn't have to physically inspect the property. Um, so keep an eye on that one. That's interesting. There's obviously state by state differences in some of these things, um, but you know, keep an eye on that. Uh, the last one is that FEMA, for any of you in the flood zone, um, FEMA has extended the grace period for flood insurance renewal premiums, um, and they've extended that from 30 days to 120 days. Um, so if that's relevant to you where you're at, um, definitely um, take, you know, search, search that um, uh, and take a, take a look at that information. So um, next up is, you know, today we're going to be talking about the CARES Act. And again, we've got a legal expert on board um, who's going who's gonna to talk with us about some of this stuff. Um, and I think this is a really great uh, episode for you to share. I think that you know, we've got this 800 page legislation, uh, the CARES Act, as I'm sure you've now uh, probably heard know, is the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act. And, you know, it's an 800 page document. It was signed uh, by the president recently, um, and there's a lot in it. And what we're trying to do today is to dissect a little bit of it. And so, um, so what I want to do now is I want to actually welcome um, Justin Aragon on the screen. Um, Justin is our VP of legal at, at uh, List Reports. Um, wave, say hi, Justin. <laughs> uh, Justin got his undergrad from Berkeley. He has a law degree from Columbia. Uh, he started his career at Oric and Electronic Arts and Airbnb uh, before we were lucky enough uh, to get him on board with us. And so he's just been a tremendous asset um, to this company. And so what I wanted to do, Justin, you know, as we get started here is, you know, let's just talk for a few minutes. Um, you know. 
you, you actually took a sabbatical after you left uh, Airbnb before you joined us. So this is really fascinating. And I have so much respect for people who take time to do some interesting things with their family. So just talk for a second. Tell us a little bit about that. That's fantastic. That's fantastic. Um, guys, I'm sorry. I think I had Justin muted for part of that. Um, Self-producing a show is not so easy. So what Justin was talking about there, and hopefully I think we're back now, and I apologize for that, um, is, you know, Justin took some time off, was challenged by some friends, and um, spent some time in Costa Rica. My favorite part of that story, um, actually, Justin, uh, was how was when you describe it as um, enrolling your kids in uh, in a jungle school. I think that's my yeah. favorite. that's my favorite part of that experience. Um, so you know, fortunately, you weren't muted for the most important part of this uh, conversation, uh, which is us talking about the CARES Act today. And so I've got a slide up on screen right now, and you know, this this 800 page um, uh, document has a lot in it, and there's really three components. There's individual relief, there's tax relief, and then there's the Paycheck Protection Program. And you know, what we had talked about kind of getting set up for this was really focusing on the Paycheck Protection Program piece of this. So, um, so why don't you kind of kick that off? What does, what does that mean? You know, the individual relief, I think, is fairly well known. Um, many Americans, not all Americans, depending on income level, are going to get checks from the government. Uh, there's tax relief that you, all of you watching, can talk to your uh, CPA about. Um, and the Paycheck Protection Program is a really important one, and it's very relevant to this audience. And so, you know, why don't you kick us off and talk a little bit about that, Justin? Sure, absolutely. Um, so, as Randy said, this is a, a really complex piece of legislation. Uh, the folks who are in charge of administering uh, this act still have another 15 days or so to, to get the, the doors open. So, all to say that this is uh, very much a work in progress. Uh, that said, uh, there are some aspects of that of this program that, that we think can be really beneficial to you all. And, and I think among them, the payment or the Paycheck Protection Act, I'm calling it the PPP, um, is uh, one of the most powerful tools we have to weather this storm together. Um, I want to just say that there are plenty of resources available online that I can recommend to you all if you want more information on any of this. And I encourage you to start with our own List Reports blog post that I'll link uh, after this talk. Okay, so the Paycheck Protection Program. The PPP is a loan forgiveness grant to small businesses and individual business owners to maintain existing workforce and pay for expenses like payroll, rent, mortgages, and utilities. The PPP has a bunch of attractive features like partial loan forgiveness, no fees, and at least six months of deferral, up to a year. Um, so here's how it works. Uh, First, you calculate your average monthly payroll cost for the previous 12 months. Payroll includes your own compensation, your salary and your commissions, and any of that of your employees as well, as well as payments for vacation, parental, family or sick leave, payments for healthcare benefits and retirement benefits, and payments of payroll taxes. Here's an important point. The payroll calculation caps compensation at $100,000. So if you're making more than 100,000, uh, you would still use 100,000 as uh, your number for the purposes of this calculation. So once you have that monthly average, you multiply it by 2.5. And that's the number that is available to you under this program. And Justin, I've got the uh, sample calculation up on the screen right now. And I think this is important, right, is we've got that, that cap. So if you made $150,000 a year, you can only use 100,000. Right, and it's the last 12 months average monthly payroll times two and a half months, correct? That's right. So let's say I had $100,000 uh, average monthly payroll cost over the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. I'd multiply it by 2.5 and I'd get $250,000. That's how much I'd be eligible under this program. Fantastic. That makes a lot of sense. So, so Justin, what I'm pulling up now is, you know, a lot of people I'm sure have questions around what they can use the money for. So, so how can they, you know, if they qualified for this, and we'll get into in a little bit how you actually apply for this uh, and what steps you can take today, but what can the money be used for? Yeah. Um, so you can use it for uh, a lot of purposes. You can use it for uh, your own payroll expenses, payment on interest for any business mortgage, uh, the rent, your uh, utilities, and interest on any other debt. Um, so it's a really strong program, and it can help us weather 
uh, the storm. That's now, fantastic. Yeah, go ahead, please, Justin. Yeah, no, I was going to go on to uh, what portion of the loan is forgiven. Uh, Absolutely. Because that's what sort of makes it special. So um, there's a portion of the loan that's forgiven. That means you don't have to pay it back, right? And so the portion is the amount you spend on payroll for the first eight weeks of your loan. So in our example, if I were to receive $250,000 under this loan, and I just used it on the first eight weeks of my payroll expense at 100,000 a month, then I'd uh, have 200,000 of my 250,000 loan that was forgiven, that I wouldn't have to pay back. And then for the remainder of the loan, that 50,000, uh, the terms are really good. Uh, you have a maximum term of up to 10 years, uh, a maximum interest of 4%. And again, there are no fees and zero prepayment fees. So this is really great news, Justin, for, for those out there who are um, business owners, for those out there who are sole proprietors, does this apply to, to all of them? That's right. So there's a bunch of back and forth on the legislation, um, but where we netted out was that these programs would be available to sole proprietors uh, and individual business owners, independent contractors, everyone can get access to this program. That's fantastic. That's really great news. So, you know, we, we talked a little bit about, um, and, and for those of you listening, you know, I, when Justin and I were prepping for this, I, he has a, a real heart um, for, for our customers, for all of you out there. And, you know, what he, what he said to me, which, which was, which was kind, of, uh, kind of funny, was he said, you know, he sat, he sat, on, a lot of, um, um, sat on a lot of legal webinars, right? Uh, and on these legal webinars, uh, it's just really high level. And what he said to me was, he said, I really want this to be actionable, right? I really want this to be information um, that our, our audience, our viewers, our customers can use, which is why I would encourage you to share this with anybody um, who may not understand some of the details here. So, so Justin, you know, let's, let's talk a little bit about um, what they can do today. So we've got a slide up here um, that, that has some information. And by the way, uh, for all of you listening, we're going to link this deck. This is a public deck. We're going to link it in the comments. And so you can have access to this. You don't have to write down these long websites or information. Uh, we'll provide this to you afterwards. But Justin, why don't you go ahead and talk a little bit about what our audience can do today to take advantage of this? Sure. Um, so when I checked this morning, the SBA, uh, the Small Business Administration, which administers this program, they still hadn't opened up uh, the process to begin applications. Um, but I encourage you to check in as often as you can. Find your local SBA office online. Um, the SBA has a tool for that, or you can just simply Google search it um, and, and keep checking in uh, because once the, the doors open, uh, you want to try to be first in line as, as best you can. Um, in the meantime, there's some homework you can do. Um, all of these, uh, all this homework will need to get done anyway uh, if you decide to apply for this program. So uh, the first is to find the personal background and personal financial statement that's available on the SBA website and fill it out. Uh, then consider uh, pulling your business certificate and license, getting a copy of that, also getting a copy of your business lease if you have one, and then pull your personal and business federal income tax returns for the previous three years. Um, so that's all stuff you can get done now. And, and Randy, just uh, one uh, little detail I want to make sure everyone understands because the SBA website's a little confusing. Sure. So right now the SBA runs is running two programs. One is the Economic uh, Injury Disaster Loan, and the other is this PPP program, uh, yes. the Paycheck, Paycheck Protection Program. So when you go online to the SBA website, uh, there's a big banner at the top of their website that is uh, linking you to the Economic Injury Disaster Loan, the EIDL. Um, it's a separate program, just so everyone's clear. Um, you can apply for both. Uh, the, the issue here is that um, there are only permitted, the, the permitted use of both of the loans overlap a bunch, and you can't use uh, both of those loans for the same purpose. So if I use EIDL loan for payroll, I couldn't then use the PPP program for payroll. Um, so hey, you, somebody uh, asked, I know it's confusing. Justin, I actually pulled up the website so our users can see it. There's a banner at the okay. top that says coronavirus COVID-19 apply for economic injury disaster loan. So just, just real quick, one more time, just some, just, there's a difference there. Make sure everybody understands this. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, the economic injury disaster loan, the EIDL is a separate program. 
Uh, it covers a lot of the same uh, expense. It's meant to cover a lot of the same expense. Um, you can apply for both, but you have to use, uh, you can't use the same, pro both programs for the same purpose. I'm sorry if I'm being confusing, but if I yeah. want to cover my payroll costs, um, I could use the EIDL loan to do that, but uh, then I could not use the PPP program to do the same thing. Um, it's up to everyone, but just to be clear, we think that the PPP is a stronger program yes. because it provides loan forgiveness and a bunch of other attractive features that the EIDL does not. Um, the EIDL was uh, in place uh, a few weeks ago um, before the CARES Act was passed. That's fantastic, Justin. I, I appreciate that. Um, I, I know this is a lot of information, everybody, and we're, we're trying to condense it as much as possible and make it actionable. So, you know, grab the link to this deck. If you have any questions, drop them in um, and we can definitely discuss them. Um, Justin, I'm going to take a take a look here. Um, um, so there was a question uh, recently. I think we touched on this, but maybe they joined late. It says, will we talk about the independent contractors applying for unemployment? So just for 10 or 15 seconds, let's readdress that one for those who are joining now. Yeah, so the um, CARES Act also has um, some tax relief provisions uh, in, in it. And, and so one of the, uh, the most important ones is for folks that wouldn't otherwise have access to unemployment benefits, and that would include sole proprietors and independent contractors, um, the CARES Act opens up uh, unemployment benefits to those people. So yes, if you're a sole proprietor, if you're an independent contractor, you can apply for unemployment benefits. Uh, the other great uh, thing about the CARES Act is that it increases benefits by $600 a week through July 31st. So whatever your state is paying under an employment insurance, uh, the the CARES Act will kick it up another six hundred dollars. That's fantastic, um, Justin. That's really great. Um, thank you so much. Um, so thanks everybody, uh, Justin. Thank you so much for joining today and providing yeah. that overview. Um, uh, I just have to plug him again. We've been working with Justin for how long now? How long have you been with us? Six months. Six months, uh, and it feels like a lifetime in the best possible yeah. way. Justin has the biggest heart of anybody. Uh, I know he loves working with us, and, and we love working with him. So, Justin, I appreciate you doing this. Um, thanks, thanks for thanks for doing that, and we'll move on to the to the next segment here. So, thanks for uh, so what we did yesterday, um, and what we're going to try to do every day, is bring you a little bit of good news, something uh, on the lighter side. And so, uh, for those of you who are fans of The Office, uh, or of Jack Ryan, or specifically of John Krasinski, uh, if you haven't seen this yet, uh, he started a show called Some Good News. So I'm going to play a little intro to it. You can find it on YouTube. It's fantastic. For years now, I've been wondering, why is there not a news show dedicated entirely to good news? Well. Desperately seeking my fix somewhere else, I reached out to all of you this week, asking, nay begging, for some good news. And boy, did you deliver. After reading those replies and the incredibly heartwarming stories that came with them, I thought, all right, enough is enough, world. Why not us? Why not now? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is your fault, and this is SGN. I'm John Krasinski, and if it isn't clear yet, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. And now, for some good news. So I sort of feel like that too. I sort of feel like I have no idea what I'm doing. I apologize for the technical difficulties today. Uh, we're going to get this right around the muting. Um, I know you missed Justin's story about his sabbatical. Um, we'll 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 have him tell it another day. Um, but it's tremendous. So that's a great video. Watch it. We can all use some good news right now. Uh, you can find find that on YouTube. Some good news, John Krasinski. Um, and so tomorrow, um, I want to see you guys come back. So tomorrow, 11 a.m., we're going to have A.J. Shaw, my co-founder, is going to be back on. We're going to talk about the digital open house. Um, and I think that's all we have for today. So signing off, I'm Randy Shiozaki. Uh, and if that doesn't make sense to you, it's because you didn't watch yesterday and you should have. Uh, and more importantly, watch tomorrow. So thanks, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow.